my dudes, we are here in Varanasi. Seventeen hours of train ride later, we are here. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. You want to say hi to my video? It's for my mom. <laughs> hi, mom. All right. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. I cannot tell you guys how excited I have been to come here. It's I have heard only crazy crazy things. I think it's going to be unreal. First thing you guys need to know about Varanasi is that it is known for its spirituality, its religion, and the fact that people get cremated here. It's a huge, huge, huge cremation site. People from all over India fly their relatives who have passed here to cremate them on the Ganges River. Along the river there is 84 things called ghats where the people take their, their relatives who have passed and they, they line them there and they literally cremate them on the side of the river and it flows into the river and it's just 24 seven constant cremation along the river. And that's like what Varanasi is known for. So a ghat is literally just one of these big buildings along the side of the river. So each of the 84 ghats is for a different group of people, whether it's for a certain spirituality or a certain religion or a certain subset of people, but yeah, that's they're divided into a bunch of different people, so each group has their own place, and that's their ghat. and I'm gonna explain to you guys the whole process, the whole cremation stuff and how it happens. Obviously, I'm not gonna film or take pictures because that'd be super disrespectful and frankly, quite gross. You, you don't wanna see it. Anyway, so I have it all written out. I'll overlay some footage as I speak of just things I've gathered from around here, but I'll tell you the entire process because it's pretty interesting. So when someone dies in the Hindu religion, they are reincarnated but if they come here to Varanasi and they're bathed, then they do the whole ritual with the Ganges River and all of that, they can skip reincarnation and go to Nirvana, their version of heaven. So what happens is when someone's about to die, they come here to Varanasi and hopefully die in the city or around it very close because within 24 hours of death, they want to have been cremated and had the whole process go over. Basically, they, they pass away with family around and in a good environment. Then they're dressed up, they're actually in like a cloth and foil all around, colorful. And then they are ran through the city um, by their family, the men in the family. The women stay at home, they're not allowed at the cremation gat because there's no crying that's allowed to happen there. It's very much um, a respectful and um, like a passing, a rite of passage. So no crying, no emotion. It's super expensive, so once the body is run down to the gat where they do the cremations, they are purchase wood and spices and all the stuff needed, but it's very expensive, so the entire family pitch in money so they're able to do this because one family probably couldn't cover the costs on their own. I think he was saying you need like 200 kilograms of wood, so you definitely need some families to, to pitch in. And because this is all done within 24 hours, a lot of the people who would normally be at a funeral and in the Western world would not be here because there's not enough time for them to get to the cremation site. Uh, so there's a lot of video chatting and stuff going on of people showing what is happening so people can tune in from other places. So basically they bring the body, they wash the body in the Ganges River with water and then they let it dry before the whole ceremony commences. And then they, they get their wood from the huge wood piles, they buy it and they stack it and then they stack the body on the wood and then cover it with more wood so it is enclosed and then they cover it with spices and aromatics and herbs and all that stuff. And so the smoke actually doesn't smell very bad. It's really like, I don't know, it just smells like, like a harsh wood fire. It's thick. And then it takes approximately three hours for the body to actually decompose and burn and 
have the cremation process finished. So the family sits there and they, they talk about it, they sing hymns and, and do all of that stuff. And, and then once the body and the whole process is over, they collect the ashes and the bones and they actually release them into the Ganges River. And so basically you don't want to swim in that river. And then after the whole process is done, everyone would return to the house with the women. And it's basically a party for 13 days of talking about the people, who they were, the stories that, that they have, and kind of a celebration of life at that point. So it's a full, whole circle, big event that happens here. And it's, Varanasi is a very important place for that reason, because everyone wants to have this happened to them and ha wants to skip reincarnation and move on to the afterlife. So that's it, there's, there's a lot to it. It is very culturally intense. It is a very, very intense place to be, but it's very, very interesting nonetheless. One thing I wanna add is that in the Ganges River, there used to be a lot of bodies or partially burnt bodies, and there still is, because some families can't afford enough wood to fully decompose or fully cremate a body and so they get thrown into the river and the government has started to stop that or help with that by introducing an electric cremation site that apparently is a lot cheaper. It does the entire process in five minutes rather than three hours but a lot of people still don't do that because they don't uh, they want to do it in the traditional way basically. So that's a thing the government has done to try and cut back on the amount of uh, partially decomposed bodies in the river but it still happens. So we haven't seen any, but we've talked to lots of people who have said they have seen literally like half burnt bodies floating down the river. So. Mike and I just visited the main gat. At the one we were at, there was like two cremations going on, but at the main gat that we just visited, there was too many to count. There was so many. And apparently they go through two to three hundred a day, they were saying. So that's every day, continuously cremating. It's an insane like culture shock and so vastly different from anything I've seen. I I can't even tell you how many bodies we just saw being burnt. And, and they're covered in cloth, but as the cremation proceeds, the cloth kind of like melts away. And so it, it's kind of freaky, but but, um, yeah, I guess it's just the way it's the way things work here and how it goes and so yeah We are now headed to find the blue lassie shop because they have some of the best lassie in Varanasi apparently the people at our hostel said we have to check it out so many flavors of lassi. Definitely got to go for the coconut chocolate banana. There's no questions about that. For those of you who don't remember, we had lassi right at the beginning of our trip, but it's basically, it's, it's yogurt. It's, it's basically yogurt. Banana chocolate, snap, that looks good. I cannot wait to dig in. How is it, dude? Very good. It's so good. It's amazing, it's delicious. That Lassie was delicious. If you're in the area of Blue Lassie, check them out. So the Gats aside, Varanasi itself is a very, very busy city. I mean, it's fairly dirty and um, yeah, it's just like a chaotic Indian city. Let's just say you do not come to Varanasi for the beautiful place with calm travel vibes, but you do come here for the super unique cultural experience, something that I've never seen in my life before. My friends, I am back at the Gats for sunset. Mike is actually in the room. He's pretty tired, so he didn't come with me, but I'm gonna explore and see what it's like in a different light, quite literally a different light. You can actually see the cremations happening at the main cremation Gat right over there. There, It's still going and it's late.
actually a group of people here in Varanasi that practice some very strange things and I'm not going to shed too much light onto it because I don't totally agree with everything. Actually, I don't agree with anything they do, but I thought I'd let you guys know about it. So Mike and I saw some of these people today and I definitely didn't take pictures or video, but they, they do some stuff. They're exiled monks from what I understand and they, they operate here in Varanasi. But they do stuff like drink out of the Ganges River, which as you guys know, cremated ashes go into. They rub ashes on themselves so they're actually gray, like their skin is gray because of that. They, um, it's hard to say. They eat human flesh. It's like an actual thing. The guy was saying that it's not like, you can't think of it like that because they take it from bodies that they find in the Ganges River. They don't hurt people. It's still absolutely disgusting. I, they do some really weird stuff and like I said, I don't agree with any of it so I'm not going to shed light onto it but it's a thing that happens in this world so I mean, it actually happens. And probably of no surprise, they practice things like dark magic and voodoo and necromancy and, but yeah, they're just like, it's really messed up, it, it really is. But hey, that's Farinasi. This is an absolutely crazy city, more crazy than I even expected. I've, like I said, never seen anything like it. It is mind blowing, some of the stuff that we've seen and that has happened. I, I can't even. Anyways, I'm gonna head back to the hostel and take it easy tonight because my mind, my body, I'm just drained from everything that has happened today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you so much and I'll see you all in another one.